Should I pretend to be someone I am not? If you know me better than I know myself And you will know deep inside my heart My God I am tired of deceiving myself But now I want to tell you Of how I have been suffering without you I am came to the Universal Church, my life was in a mess with my family. One day it had a program was going on on the television. I sit closely and I listen to the program. And it had a program was going on about a parent with the problem she had with her kids. I tell myself, I will go to church, I will use my feet and just as how she get her family life fixed, I could get mine. So I took myself and I went to church. I end up receiving the Holy Spirit. Well then I start to get peace in my life and then I take a step and I use my feet by using the chain of prayer. I was very obedient in it. I asked God to change every one of them because they was partying, they was liming, drinking, following bad company. Today, all my children is in the church with me. My three sons and my daughter. They get a total transformation. Today I am happy and I am pleased with what God done for me. Because I had a lot of depressions with my children because they follow in bad company. So I try to fix myself first. Do the same as I did. Come into the church. Do the chain of prayer. Because it works. Use your feet. Just as what I ask God for, you speak to Him. And He will do it for you. You will receive a total transformation for your kids. And they will follow you. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind, victory today is mine. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind, victory today is mine. These are ready, but top for the Lord is on my side. These 
better for me Things already better Things are already better, much better for me. Things are already better. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle, he's a miracle working God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, every the earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven the earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. God is not dead, but he's alive. God is not dead, but he's alive. God is not dead, but he's alive. His power is in my hands, his power is in my feet, his power is all over me. God is not dead, but he's alive. God is not dead, but He's alive, God is not dead, but He's alive. His power is in my hands, His power is in my feet, His power is all over me. His power is in my hands, His power is in my feet, His power is all over me. So, I grew up in Spain and I was a child of a teenage pregnancy. Luckily, I had both of my parents growing up, but it wasn't always good. I remember I used to be such a daddy's girl. I would always be with my dad. And it was really, it, it was like a very loving family. But I remember at the age of four or maybe three, I started seeing domestic violence at home. Um, it all started because my father, he was really young and he didn't really prioritize his family. So he would go out with friends, go out, on a, go out on a Friday, come back on a Sunday morning, Monday morning. And my mom didn't really take that nicely. So she would be so jealous. She will basically start arguing with him, telling him that he was worth nothing. And all these arguments led to violence so I started to see my parents physically fighting and I remember there was even a time where my mom took a machete and she actually sliced his arm and me seeing all of this violence just made me think why is my dad causing all of this because I saw him as the main problem basically and I just thought if you're a man, you're meant to protect us, not hurt us. Years went by and things only got worse because of the lifestyle that my dad was living. He got really, really ill. And he, because of this, he developed a disease and he had to go through surgery. And I remember there was even a time where he almost passed away. And I was actually happy because I thought if he's gone, then that must mean that everything will be fine because it will be me and my mom and that's it but um, as I said he could, he wasn't able to work anymore because of the disability that he now had and my mom had to be the one basically the breadwinner of the house she would go to work for long hours by the time she would come back I would be sleeping by the time that she went I was sleep asleep as well so um, my dad was just at home he got really depressed because of the of his health and now the anger that he used towards my mom, he was using towards me. So he would beat me, he would tell me horrible things. And at the time, I was about maybe seven or eight years old. And I was like, why is he doing this to me? But as I said, the anger that I previously had now, grow, now grew even more. And I just couldn't stand him, stand him at all. And um, years went by again, 
and my mom decided to come to the UK for a better future. At the time, I wasn't really happy because I thought, you know I don't like my dad and you're going to leave me behind living with him alone. So she went and for that year that she wasn't home, it was so bad, so, so bad. I remember I was maybe like uh, 12, 13 years old at school. I was brilliant. I was the A star student. Then I got to secondary school and I started to see that grades wasn't everything but fame and being the popular girl and everything. So um, my older cousin, she was very popular and I just wanted to be like her. I wanted to dress like her. I wanted to just basically be her. And um, she introduced me to going out, speaking to guys and all of these things. And I thought, actually, I really like this because the more, more time I spend outside, the less time I will be with my father. So a year went by and my mom said, okay, why well, don't you come to visit me? So me and my father went to my, um, came to the UK, sorry, for holiday for a week. And I actually really enjoyed it because when my mom left me, I, th I said, you want me to go to a brand new country where I literally know no one, I don't know the language and start, start all over again. And actually when I came to the UK, it was actually quite nice. So I said, oh, maybe this is the new beginning that I've been looking for. Um, so when I came back from holiday, my auntie, my dad's sister received um, my dad received a call from my auntie and she said that my grandma was quite sick. So one Saturday I received a phone call from my dad saying your grandma has passed away. I think in this moment I can't even explain what I felt. I felt sad, I felt just this overwhelming feeling. Cutting the long story short, my dad went back home Dominican Republic to bury her and I stayed with my auntie in in Spain and as I said I started going downhill I started to have suicidal thoughts all the time I was so sad I said it's better for me to go with her so I remember one month after she died I took a knife and I was about to cut my wrist but then I said no no this is too painful I can't do it a few weeks after my dad came back and then he said, okay, I'm gonna send you to your mom back in, in the UK, sorry. So I was like, okay, you know, many things are going wrong for me, but actually if I go to the UK, it's a brand new beginning, a new start, so why not? So I went, I came to the UK, and now this is really when I realized I don't know what else to do, my life is finished. So um, I came to the church, and as I said, I didn't understand anything because I didn't speak English at the time. Um, but it was a nice environment. Then um, I got invited to the youth group. But now, because of all the complexes and insecurities that I had about the way that I looked, the way that my hair was, I didn't want to come back. Not because I didn't like it, but because I thought that people would judge me. I thought. They will, they will judge my accent, they will judge the way that I speak, the way that I dress. And because of this, I stopped coming for a while. About four months later, um, I got invited to a night vigil, a New Year's Eve night vigil, and I went. And then I started hearing um, testimonies of people that used their faith and their life changed. And I realized, actually, if my life is so bad, and I have no way out of it. Why don't I just give God a try? And the reason why I didn't want to give God a try was because I used to go to many churches back home and it was just the same thing all over again. But when I came to this church in this youth group, I realized that God was actually real because I was seeing people's life changing. So I said, I'm gonna give my all, I'm going to, um, give up everything, all the things that I'm feeling, all the things that I'm going through, and I'm just gonna give it to God and give it a try. So I started using my faith and coming more frequently to the youth group, taking on board what they were saying and putting it into practice, and I started seeing the changes. So as I said, the suicidal thoughts were gone, the 
um, complexes were little by little living. Um, the anger that I had towards my dad, which was the hardest thing to give up because, to be honest, when someone hurts you, you think you have a right to keep a grudge against them, to make them feel the pain that you felt when they hurt you. But the truth is that you're just hurting yourself because my dad was living his life and literally he knew that I hated him so much. So um, I forgave my dad, which was really, really hard but very um, beneficial because at the end, um, my parents got to get to got together again and they actually got married. So my life today is completely different. Um, I don't have complexes anymore. I don't look, at my, look down on myself. I um, have a good relationship with my dad. After a long time, he decided to come to the UK. Now um, him and my mom, mom have been married for like maybe four, three years. I know what to do with my life now. I've decided what I wanted to do, whereas before I was very confused. I didn't really know what I wanted, but now I do. And life is just moving forward for me. So if you're watching this, I want to tell you that there is hope for you. No matter what you're going through or, you, or what you've been through, what matters is what you have inside of you. And when you believe in yourself, you're capable of doing great things. So give the youth group a try. Probably you've heard so many people saying so many different things, negative things, positive things, but the truth is that you have to come for yourself and see it for yourself. So yes, that's it.